A very special night tonight for you personally being involved with a lot of the animations, including Peppa Pig. What is it about that animation in particular that uh, you know, engrosses these younger viewers? I don't know. It's, I mean, Peppa Pig is a, it's a wonderful, wonderful show, and I think it's there's an element of mystery to it about what it is about that show that has specifically um, appealed so enormously to an audience. But I think it's, I think it's, it's fantastic and it's beautiful and it's well written. It's incredibly well written, and it's not patronising. And I think children like it because they relate to it, and I think um, parents like it because they relate to it too. It's kind of like, yeah, I think, it, I think it's got a very broad appeal but not trying to have one. They're not trying to do anything other than be funny and entertaining. Do you think it's, it's kind of like a brand now because it has really become very big in terms of product as well as the programme? Well, it's, I mean, it's interesting. I think that was a surprise to everyone. I think the success of it when we started it was you, nobody anticipated that it would, it, would, it would be that way. It wasn't at all constructed to, to be like that. It was just something that Mark and Neville, the animators, wanted to do and really believed in. And I think that, for me, that's the, that's the key. And, and I've worked with them a lot, Mark and Neville, on Little Kingdom and before that on um, an animated film called Jolly Roger and a series called Big Nights. And I think they're always absolutely 100% true to their own vision. And they've, they've found a way with Peppa Pig of being allowed to do that. And they write nearly all the episodes with one or two other writers. And they, they keep their vision really strong. And I think that's, um, that's sometimes lacking, I think, because there's so much anxiety around children's television in terms of... Um, uh, it has to, it has to uh, answer so many um, sort of remits. Um, that I think it can be anaesthetised, but I think Pepper's got a very strong viewpoint and is all the better for it. What are your, what are your key involvements with these animations as such? As a writer? Uh, you know, I, I'm, um, I, I, do, I voice a lot of cartoons, so, so oh, animations. I voice um, the new Dennis and Nasha, a pie face in that, and lots of characters in that, and I do um, another one called Tilly and Friends, which is a really lovely preschool animation, and one called Humph, which is really lovely. Um, and before that I did Rupert Bear, and, um, and Pepper and Ben and Holly, are really are really exciting. They're lovely to do. So I I can do lots of different voices. That's my you know that's that's I why I do. It. Not as an impressionist. Really. I don't really do impressions. I just do. I really love working with um with images and, and seeing a picture and thinking what would that what would, how who's that character and how do we create that and that was that was that's a really lovely collaborative way to work and animation is really lovely to do because it's about it's very quiet and it's you can get time to think up the character you want to do and you work with the animators and work with the work with the voice directors and it's a really really lovely process so for me it's lovely yeah what is the main difference between being an actress or a performer in front of a camera yet standing in front of a microphone in a studio where you haven't got anything in front of you. That's a really good question. It doesn't really matter what you wear. That's that's the main thing. Yeah, what you look like. So that's a, that's great for me. Yeah, you could go to work in your pajamas. That's yeah. nice. Um, it's it's very focused. I mean, people do it differently. Um, for example, when we did Dennis and Nasha, um, we were all in the room together. All the voice artists were in the room together and became. I, I knew a couple of them beforehand, but we became all very good friends because we did. 52 of them. Um, Pepper, we record it all separately. So actually, for a long time, I think I've only met Daddy Pig three times. So it's strange we've over, over 200 of them. It's it's um it's a different process each time, and each time there's something very um straightforward, very pure about it. I really enjoy doing it because it, you're focusing just on the voice and not on how you look. It's very unselfconscious. Does it bring out any more expressive natures? Do you think uh, or improvisation uh, natures being in front of in that way? Yeah, that's a great question. It, it is, and, and I think when you work with um, certain directors, they really encourage you to, to improvise. Um, I did a, a series called King Arthur's Disasters, and uh, that was a really that we were that was with Rick Mayer and Matt Lucas and Phil Cornwell, and we were that's kind of what we all do is improvise and do comedy, and so we were encouraged to do that. But also sticking to the script, and then the animators animated to that. So it's um, it's a fantastic it's a fantastic medium. I absolutely love it. Yeah, really love it. Do you see yourself maybe? Going into big animation movies, as in the the, the, the Pixar type of way, you know, the, the sort of very big animation. That would be a dream come true. So if you know anyone who can actually put me in that, can you sort that out? I've done actually Barbie movies. I've done the Barbie movies. So I was the voice of Barbie in one of them. And then I was another character in the last Barbie movie, which was brilliant fun. But yeah, if you could sort that for me with Pixar. We'll, we'll get, on the phone now. get on the phone now, thank you. Yeah, brilliant, excellent. Yeah, get back to me by the end of the evening, if that's all right. Yeah, because I'd just be waking up in LA. So excellent, thank you. Thank you, Marina, thank you.